If you use Google Drive, some of your data might be lost. Here's why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Fireside. That's our digital fireplace. We had a real one last week, but not this week. We're digital. In Florida, that's all that you get. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about Google. I know you guys love Alphabet, don't you? I mean, I do. It's a lot of stuff that they do right, but sometimes they do things wrong. And we wanna talk about it a little bit. I've told you guys many times on this channel in the past that it's just not safe to store everything in the cloud and not have local backups, but a lot of people still do it. Are you one of those? You know you are. Don't do it. Anyways, I was reading an article over on Bleeping Computer and it was talking about how people were losing their data, folders were missing, data was missing and they weren't getting very far with Google's support. So I wanna read this article to you because I think it's very important. So if you are a Google Drive user, you might wanna go into your drive and take a look at the landscape. See if there's any folders missing, see if there's important data missing. If there is, you need to put in or file a case. You need to put in a trouble ticket so something can be done and then you are added to this massive number of users that have lost data. So we're gonna get into this, but before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They are 100% free. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even then at least throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to. If not, it's okay too. But if you are subscribed, thank you. Click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN, look no further, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is JCristina. It will give you 15% off, additional percent off at checkout. If you don't want to remember that code, go to jcristina.com forward slash VPN. So guys, let's get into this a little bit because it is important. This is mission critical, all right? So when you're done watching this video, I want you to immediately log into Google, log into your Google Drive, because the majority of us have one. And it doesn't matter if you have a paid for service, right, where it's Google Workspaces, or if you just have Google for free and you store your data there, still log in and check it out. Let's jump right into the article. It starts out by saying, Google Drive users are reporting that recent files stored in the cloud have suddenly disappeared. That's a problem. Uh, this is Houston, uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. With the cloud service reverting to a storage snapshot as it was around April, May of 2023. Ouch. We're talking about months of lost data, not like a day. Eesh. Google Drive is a cloud-based storage service that allows people to store and access files from any internet-connected drive via their Google account. It is a widely used service by individuals and businesses as part of the Google Workspace. Quote, there is a serious issue here that needs to escalate urgently. We have a support ticket open. This has not been helpful to date, said a Google Drive user on a support forum. Quote, I pay extra each month to store folders in the cloud so it would be safe. So it is devastating that all of my work appears to have been lost. Another Google Drive user posted. The activity logs on the impacted accounts do not show any recent changes, confirming that the users themselves did not accidentally delete them. Overall, there is no indication of user error, but rather a problem with the services system that prevents the synchronization of data between the local devices and Google Cloud at some point. That is a problem. Some users have offline caches that might contain the missing data, but no known method exists to restore access to the data within them. That's a problem. Google volunteer support agents, what? 
Google volunteer support agents have posted an alleged response from Google support engineers that confirms they are already investigating the issue. However, an estimate for a fix has not yet been provided. They show the actual quoted conversation between the support person and the person that asked the question. I'll post that here, there, wherever, so you can read it. The recommendation for those affected is to avoid making changes to the root slash data folder until the situation clears up and the root cause of the problem is determined. Very important. Once again, let me reread that. The recommendation for those affected is to avoid making changes to the root slash data folder until the situation clears up and the root cause of the problem is determined. Don't change anything. Leave it alone until they fix this because you might lose stuff or it'll be harder for them to be able to figure out what has been lost and what hasn't. So keep that in mind. Understandably, many users are frustrated by the loss of critical data they entrusted in the cloud-based service and in many cases paid for the hosting of their files. Just like I do with Workspace, I actually pay Google every month to have their service, right? So. Obviously, I'm not going to use them for my data only or solely. I have many backups and we'll get into that in just a second. But I also pay Google to have this service. And so do many other people. It's one thing if it's free and something is missing. You're like, eh. But if you're paying, it's no longer, eh. It's like, where in the hell is my shit? A notable aspect to the situation is that Google support forms are backed by volunteers with limited insight or understanding of the cloud service. So the lack of effective assistance in critical problems like this makes it even worse. Hell yeah. How in the f does a multi-billion dollar company support their users with volunteers? They can't pay some people. They can't educate people. I mean, what the hell is that? Volunteers? What are you, a nonprofit? What? What the f that, is, that is the most ridiculous shit I've heard in a long time. I would never have guessed. Would you have guessed? Google's support team is <laughs> run by volunteers? Bleeping Computer has contacted Google for an update on the status of the internal investigation and whether the loss of files are recoverable or irreversibly lost. But we have not received a response by publication time. In this situation, Google Drive users should refrain from changing their cloud storage as it might complicate the recovery process. Like I said, instead, your best bet would be to contact Google support, open a new case and monitor for official updates. Until the problem is resolved, it would be more prudent to back up important files locally or use a different cloud service. Like I've told you guys, and like I said at the beginning, I've said this so many times, one day the cloud is going to rain and it's going to wash out all of your important data. And this is the kind of stuff that happens. This is what I've always been talking about, right? Where you think you have your data in the cloud and it is safe. Google or Alphabet is taking care of it. Well, no matter what, they still have to take responsibility of it if you're paying or not paying because they are offering the service to you. But if you are paying for the service and they'd still lose your data, well, now we're dealing with a bigger problem. And having volunteers to support this whole thing is just, it's unacceptable. It is absolutely unacceptable. So. When I had piles and piles and piles of data, if you guys don't know it, I'm a DP, I'm a director of photography. I've been doing podcasting for almost 20 years, 18 years or something. A lot of social stuff, a lot of coverage. I'm talking about in photo as well as video, all kinds of audio and is terra, 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 terabytes of data. And for many years, I was piling them up on a whole just stacks and stacks and stacks of external drives. The problem was I wouldn't be able to find the things that I wanted, even though on the drive I would put the date 
of the data that's on it so I can go and kind of sort through it, kind of cull through it and find exactly where it is, but it would take hours. So what I ended up doing is I said, you know what, I'm going to build a RAID array. But instead of doing a regular RAID where I had problems in the past where I still lost data, I ended up building an unraid server. You see this book over here, How to Create a Digital Fort Knox, Backing Up Your Digital Life. Let me see, I got one over here, here, right? I wrote this when I was building this computer out of 10, 12 year old parts. Well, I did this two years ago and this computer is still running as an unraid server that houses 40, 50 terabytes of data that's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's never down, it's always up, it's always there and I have all of my data at a moment's notice. And I can also traverse through the internet into that box if I wanted to through a secure, I'm not gonna get into it, but through a secure connection and still have access to my data, almost like my own cloud. Now, do I only store there? No, because it's local and there's a fire, there's a problem. You have to have three forms of backup, right? If you have one, it's the equivalent of none, right? Two is okay, but two is still one. Three is what you need. You need one local, you need one that's an actual backup, a hot backup like on an Unraid server, and then you need a cold storage backup, people, off the premise, right? Maybe in the cloud, maybe with Google. But the bottom line is, is you cannot rely on Google or any other cloud-based service because like I said, one day it's gonna rain and all your data is gonna be washed out. Anyways, if you guys wanna go and check this out, remember I said that you can go and take a look at my books? Well, one of the books that I have for free is the prologue to this book over at jcristina.com forward slash books. Go check it out, download it, see if you like it. If you like it, buy the book. You can find it on Amazon bookstores. You can buy it at the site, jcristina.com. Anyways, it takes you through, it handholds you on how to build this thing out of old used parts like in a weekend. Very simply, okay? So, like I said, coming full circle, if you have a Google account, Google Drive, I don't care if it's paid or not paid, go look at it and see if there's any data missing in there. And if there is, and you have it locally, right? Notate it, mark it down, put that data on like a spreadsheet or something. I don't think they've fixed it yet because I haven't seen a report, but maybe they have. But once they do, upload or re-upload that data back into the cloud. So once again, you'll have two copies. You should have three, but this way you'll have two copies, your local copy and their copy up there in the cloud. <sighs> Guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is scary. And there's too many people out there that rely on the cloud solely for their data. And then one day it's missing and now what? It's the same folks that pick up a cell phone every year. They go from 32 gig to 64 gig, 128 gig, 256, 512 terabyte, whatever. And they keep getting a bigger one, why? Because they wanna store all those photos, all those videos, all of that stuff on the phone. And many of them do not take that data and migrate it or move it onto their computer for safekeeping. They keep it on their phone and then their phone ends up in the drink, <laughs> in a lake or in the ocean or something. And they're like, ah, I just lost six years of important pictures and videos of my grandkids or my children and it's gone forever. Don't do that, all right? Don't be like these people, just don't do it. Build an Unraid server, get some type, if you don't wanna build something, get some type of backup array and store all of your stuff there so at least you have one good physical hard copy of it local to you that you can access even if your internet is down. Some people don't even think about that. If your internet goes down and all of your shit is in the cloud, how do you get to it? You can't. I've had times where our internet, because we have crap internet, way back in the day with just AT&T, now we have Starlink and T-Mobile, but with just AT&T and they would just go down for days and I had proposals that I sent into the cloud that I made in Google Docs or something and I couldn't access it because I was stupid because I didn't have them local yet either. So this kind of stuff happens. If you do not have access to the web because your internet is down, you do not have access to your files either. Make sure you have a local copy of everything. And then one in the cloud, that's fine. 
and then one, whatever you wanna do as far as cold storage. I personally put everything that's in that Unraid server I take all of that data and put it onto two or three massive slow drives and then take those drives and mail them off to another location. This way they're there. That is your cold storage. That is storage that you can't access warm. In other words, it's not there local to you and it's not in the cloud. It is somewhere safe that if there's a fire, a hurricane, tornado or something and all of your data locally is gone, are you going to have something, anything left and if you have cold storage, you will. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this at least a little bit helpful. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That will be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, click this button, do all of that happy stuff. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and merch and tees and all kinds of other stuff. Hopefully you like something there and pick it up to support me and my family. That's it, guys. Thank you for being here. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay secure, back up your shit, <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.